Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about Mario Kart Tour. Before I get started I should probably mention that I think Mario Kart Tour is a good game. I think the mechanics are well implemented in turning Mario Kart into something that can be played on a phone, and I personally play it relatively frequently, and I have been a free-to-play user since the game launched. That being said, I believe as a product, Mario Kart Tour is incredibly greedy and predatory to its fanbase, and today I want to talk about why I think we will never see a Time Trials mode in the game. First of all, for anyone who doesn't know, Mario Kart Tour is a mobile game where you can play Mario Kart. Crazy, I know. Some things are changed from the typical Mario Kart formula though, like always moving forward without brakes or a reverse button, or item boxes giving you multiple items per box, even giving you a frenzy mode for a limited time only when you get free of the same item. By far the biggest change though is that it is a mobile game, meaning there are mobile game business decisions like having microtransactions and gambling for children. Oh, I mean, loot boxes. Whoops, sorry, again. Um, warp pipe pulls? Yeah, warp pipe pulls. If you've heard anything about Mario Kart Tour, it's probably about these predatory mobile game practices, and when the game flashes up to tell you to buy its subscription service for $5 dues a month, it's not hard to see why this is commonly brought up. This has all been surface level information though, I want to go a little bit deeper into the predatory business practices of Mario Kart Tour. But to do that, I'll need to first ask the question of how do you beat Mario Kart Tour? This question may sound a little arbitrary, but it's a little tricky to answer for Mario Kart Tour. Now in a typical Mario Kart game, you win by getting the gold cups in each of the Grand Prix, maybe by beating the ghosts in the time trials as well, and by completing the mission modes if they're available. In Mario Kart Tour, you could argue that you win by getting all the Grand Stars every two weeks, or by beating the Ranked Cup every week, or by winning multiplayer races. What's important to note though is that spending money makes each of these actions easier. If you spend money on rubies to spin the slot machine, you can get better characters, carts, and gliders, or as I'll be calling them collectibles. The more money you spend, not only will you get more collectibles, your collectibles will also get leveled up to make them more effective. By having lots of high-level collectibles, collecting all the Grand Stars every two weeks, and beating the other players in the weekly ranked cups get progressively easier, as each course has preferred collectibles, and the more stuff you have, the more likely you are to have these collectibles that are preferred. Also with higher level collectibles, not only do you get higher scores through bonus points, but you'll also get indirect bonuses like longer combo times. In multiplayer, the effectiveness of throwing money at the wall varies, but it's always still a valid strategy, as spending money doesn't just help your score, but it also helps your placement in races. In standard races, having a better character nets you three main advantages. The first advantage is better items. High-end drivers typically have more useful items than low-end drivers. It's definitely better to use Dry Bowser with his Bowser shell that tears through opponents than Lummy, who uses the bubble, which prevents you from using other items, drifting, or doing jump boosts while only being able to go over off-road in return. The second benefit is that you'll get more item slots. Like mentioned before, with more characters, you're more likely to have a character that can use more items and get frenzies on any given course. Lastly, you'll have higher chances to get frenzies, as higher level characters have higher chances to get frenzies than lower level drivers. For typical multiplayer races, having better drivers can still play an important role. However, that role is diminished some of the time, as some days have races that only use 2 or 1 items per character instead of their varying amounts. In these races, there are only two things that really improve your odds at winning. The first is having a better driver will give you access to better items, like before, as well as having a higher level driver will give you access to plus versions of each item, such as the Fire Flower Plus, which gives you an extra fireball per flower. It's definitely the least impacted mode of Mario Kart Tour, but money can definitely still play a hand at winning these online races. Or perhaps it's not the least impacted mode, as we haven't talked about the game's mission mode. At the end of each cup, the game has an arbitrary mission mode stage, which does not affect the weekly ranked cup, but it does reward grand stars depending on how well you did. What's important about these courses, though, is that they use predetermined collectibles, whether you have them or not. So money is not something that affects these courses. Another thing that's important about them is that they're really easy. And don't get me wrong, the whole game is laughably easy. But these stages in particular, well, they are completely free. These levels are so easy, in fact, that I actually cleared one with a Grand Star without doing anything. Not from luck, which you could argue in a typical race, but from the level design being so easy that I just beat it without doing anything. Well, except I lied to you. I didn't just beat a course without doing anything, I beat several. 
so many in fact that yesterday I uploaded a two and a half hour video on levels that can be beaten without doing anything. Let me repeat, this is not a fluke. In fact, not all of them were just cleared with one measly grand star, a bunch actually gave me two. Heck, a couple gave me three stars! 100% clear without doing anything! To put in perspective how bad it is, it caused me to make this video now, because I have so much footage on my phone, I literally am out of storage space. I would also like to note that just because some mission mode levels aren't present, that doesn't mean they're difficult. It just means I can't beat a picture challenge because I'm not allowed to press the camera button. This all begs one question. Why? Why would Nintendo make these levels so easy? In my opinion, there can only be one real explanation. If someone sucks at Mario Kart Tour, they can spend money to get better at the game. That doesn't work for the bonus challenges though, so how do you ensure that they don't get mad at them? How do you ensure that they don't lose? And the answer is simple, you make it practically impossible to lose. The mode acts more as a time waster for grand stars than anything with actual meaning. I guess I should also probably address the two elephants in the room. First, some bonus challenges do allow you to choose your own collectibles, such as big reverse races. These don't really change anything though, because sure, they feature randomness, but that doesn't change the lack of randomness and lack of difficulty in the other challenges. Also, as I'm sure a lot of you have been screaming at your screens, time trials do exist in these bonus challenges. But while the mechanics of time trials are in Mario Kart Tour, the spirit really isn't present, as there's no leaderboards or way to play time trials for particular levels while they're not a part of a two-week rotation. And I really am talking more about why there's no dedicated time trials mode. Which, speaking of which... Okay, so let's say I was right about Nintendo making mission mode excessively easy just to prevent whales that suck at the game from leaving by realizing that they suffer from a certified skill issue. That's pretty manipulative, but it doesn't really explain why there's no time trial mode. Except it kind of does. What is a time trial mode? It's a test of pure skill, not manipulatable by microtransactions or by luck. Well, unless you're Mumu Farms from Mario Kart 64. While you could lock stages and time trials behind a paywall to fix the microtransaction issue, that probably wouldn't work with Mario Kart Tour because it would make Nintendo's free game look a little less free, and whales who pay to get access and still suck at the game would still get fed up because, well, they suck and would lose to players with actual skill. Long story short, adding time trials to Mario Kart Tour would probably not bring in new whales and might even cause whales to leave. And while general perception of the game may improve, Nintendo hasn't been known to put the fans of a series in front of a dollar. So, most likely, time trials modes as we know them are probably stuck to the normal entries of the Mario Kart series. This might not be true forever, though. Recently, Nintendo has been making decent improvements to Mario Kart Tour, such as opening a spotlight shop to buy new characters opposed to straight-up gambling for children, as well as reducing the cost of rubies a little bit. They have also continued adding major content, such as battle mode, new items, and Miis with costumes. If Nintendo continues to add major content, there's always the likelihood that adding time trials in a traditional sense isn't completely out of the question. But with that, I would like to say thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.